One of the most important aspects of a movie is often the unsung hero. The script guides the movie and is the first major step in bringing it to life. But sometimes, studios purchase scripts and ultimately leave them to collect dust after spending millions of dollars acquiring the rights to produce those movies. I've been really looking forward to this one. Let's dive into these pricey scripts that never saw the light of day. If you won't do that, I will. There's been a lot of talk about Henry Cavill returning as the Man of Steel in an upcoming DC Comics movie, which made me think back on the Superman movie that never was. Yeah, I'm talking about that Tim Burton movie that was going to star Nicolas Cage as Clark Kent. The movie was something of a lifelong dream for Cage, who was a big comic book fan. He was going to be working with Burton, who made Batman all dark and serious on the big screen prior, and the script was based off a concept by Kevin Smith, who loosely adapted some parts of the death of Superman. The script was passed down the line and only some parts of the Smith script remained intact, chiefly the title and the appearance of Brainiac. The script demanded a huge budget and Warner Brothers were experiencing some box office failures at the time. It likely didn't help that Burton got $5 million from the movie in a pay or play contract, meaning he got paid no matter what. Ultimately, the script in the movie proved to be too ambitious and costly, and the movie was ultimately scrapped. You can really dive in and learn more about this movie in the highly recommended documentary called The Death of Superman Lives, What Really Happened, directed by the late, great John Schnapp. We still have to wait at least a year for the upcoming Halo TV series coming on Showtime. But for some of us, we've been patiently waiting for a Halo movie ever since 2005. I mean, does anybody remember when Alex Garland wrote a script based on the immensely popular video game series? I mean, I was super hyped when those awesome live action shorts came out. The Halo series is not only crazy popular, but has a surprisingly deep story with plenty of lore. Perfect perfect ground for expanding the universe. The movie was going to be directed by Neil Blomkamp, with Peter Jackson in the executive producer chair. Microsoft paid Garland $1 million for the script, which, considering the games have grossed a few billion dollars, seems like chump change, we're just saying. Despite the talent involved, the movie never went anywhere, and Blomkamp declared the movie dead in 2007. The main reason was the movie was going to be costly, and Microsoft was not not fronting the bill. Instead, Fox and Universal were going to front most of the movie, which caused tensions in who had more control over the movie. Here's hoping that Halo works better as a show instead of a movie, though. We can expect Pablo Schreiber as Master Chief, with Steven Spielberg serving as an executive producer. What's interesting about this particular entry is that it was technically made in the end as 2010's Robin Hood, but that movie looks nothing like the script that the studio initially purchased. That original script was brought to life in 2007, and the writers Ethan Reif and Cyrus Voris shopped it around to be made. You see, in the original Nottingham, the tables were turned, and Robin Hood was not stealing from the rich to give to the poor, but rather a fearsome villain. The Sheriff of Nottingham instead would be the hero of the movie. Universal bought the script for a million bucks within 48 hours of the script being on the market, with Ron Howard's company producing, Ridley Scott directing, and Russell Crowe starring. But this is where the fantasy ends for the writers. Long story short, Scott wasn't feeling the script and saw it as a huge problem. Scott was responsible for putting six million dollars worth of rewrites into the script, which was already costing the studio a million. Weirdly, everyone in Hollywood seemed to love that original script, except for Ridley Scott, who turns Nottingham into a dry, mediocre movie. This particular spec script was considered a must-have property back in the day. Written by Brian Hegeland, who would go on to write L.A. Confidential and Mystic River, and Manny Cotto of Dexter and 24 fame, the script became notorious thanks to the script being accompanied by ticking clocks when sent to studio executives. That marketing stunt got studios very excited for the ownership of the movie. The script was sold for $1.2 million and picked up Bruce Willis as the lead. The 
plot involved an explosives expert trying to prevent a robot that looks like a human which has a nuclear bomb hidden in his chest from blowing up in Moscow. Think Hurt Locker with a 90s sci-fi twist. But that's when the problems began. With the movie entering development hell, Willis decided to go work on The Last Boy Scout instead, which forced the scripts to be tweaked for each new lead that joined. Each lead subsequently bailed on the movie, which meant all the money put into rewrites would be for nothing. This spec script, written by Game of Thrones' David Benioff, set Paramount Pictures back $2 million. Once it was sold with that price tag, Martin Campbell, who directed Casino Royale and GoldenEye, was in talks to direct the movie. All in all, not a bad start for a movie that ultimately wasn't going to go anywhere. Of course, like many movies, the initial spec script that Benioff wrote wasn't quite what the studio wanted, and so it went up for rewrites. The movie was going to take place in South America and find a Navy SEAL teaming up with a canine unit in order to rescue the dog's owners, who are presumably captured by bad guys or else why involve the SEALs. Action and dog lovers would have to wait until John Wick for such a combination as this movie ultimately went nowhere. This particular script was sold to Disney's Hollywood Studios for a respectable one million bucks in the 90s. The writer of Hell Bent and Back was Rick Jaffa, who has written Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Jurassic World and is currently working on Avatar 2 and 3. He co-wrote the script with Doug Richardson, who did Die Hard 2 and Bad Boys. The plot was very... Well, not Disney. But the head of Disney in the late 80s and 90s was Jeffrey Katzenberg, who we'll see again later in this list. Katzenberg wasn't too crazy about the script. The script was about some World War II soldiers who planned to steal a whole bunch of gold from a German train, only to find the train to be filled with Jews. Ooh, sounds heavy, but it certainly has potential. Perhaps the tone was all over the place, which is why Katzenberg wasn't crazy about it. They shelved the script, and they still own the rights. It seems like back in the 90s, studios were paying top dollar for spec scripts, and this entry is no exception to that fact. That aside though, Superconducting Super Collider of Sparkle Creek, Wisconsin has to be the most ludicrous name for a movie never produced. The script was co-written by David Coep and John Camps, who wrote Jurassic Park and Premium Rush respectively. Coep made 2.5 million big ones alone, not to mention whatever Camps made off the deal. Not only that, but Coep also negotiated the possibility of writing future scripts for the potential sequels and even tossed in the rights to direct one of them in his deal. Despite all this expensive negotiation, Superconducting Super Collider never got made. It sounded like it would have been right at home with all the disaster movies of the 90s. The plot involved a super collider that's hidden under Sparkle Creek, which begins tearing up the local town. Sounds like it would have been in a similar vein to something like Dante's Peak, and maybe the studio was worried about the saturation in a genre that was already getting pretty crowded. Or maybe it was the title. I mean, come on, it sounds like something from Mary Poppins. Superconducting Super Collider of Sparkle Creek. Bad Dogs was set to be a comedic, spooky, action werewolf movie produced by none other than Steven Spielberg. The script, which was written by Dale Lawner, who wrote Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, was sold to DreamWorks in 1997 for an insane three million dollars. What's interesting and kind of amusing about this entry is that the production lead for DreamWorks, Walter Parks, was busy in a screening at the time and Ryan Coogler, president of production, was away on business. So the negotiations over the script were suddenly the responsibility of the heads of the studio, Spielberg and our friend Jeffrey Katzenberg. But Spielberg, an accomplished director himself, added notes to the script. The problem was no one could understand Understand what Spielberg was trying to say, and no one wanted to go up to Steven Spielberg and tell him that his notes were confusing. Rather than fix the problem, the script ended up in a vortex, as Dale Lawner would call it, and ultimately it vanished from existence. This script actually comes courtesy from Rob Layfield, who is the co-creator of the comic book character Deadpool. The script dates back to 1996 and sold for a whopping $2 million back then. The movie was going to have Tom Cruise in the lead, who was also going to produce the movie with his now defunct production company, Cruise Wagner. Cruise ultimately left the production and another superstar was brought in to save the day. That star was none other than Will Smith, who was attached to the movie for a few 
years. As you know, Will Smith in the 90s basically printed money for movie studios. The movie was about an ordinary dude who gets an ancient talisman and holds the balance of good and evil. Like Ticking Man, it sounds so 90s and a bit generic, at least on paper. But this is totally the kind of movie that would have likely made big bucks back in the day, and coupled with the star power that was 90s Will Smith, we're certain this flick would have made all the money. Martin Scorsese just landed a deal that sees Apple co-producing his ambitious FBI thriller Killers of the Flower Moon. The film is said to have a budget of around $200 million, which for a non-Marvel or Star Wars movie is insanely high. But this isn't Scorsese's first brush with a pricey historical flick. Alexander the Great was written by Mission Impossible Fallout's Christopher McQuarrie, who split a seven-figure deal for the script with his co-writer Peter Bushman. Alexander the Great was one of two films about the Macedonian leader in development at the time. This one, as Macquarie put it, was doomed to fail. Not only was the script expensive, but the talent involved was too. First, Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio got involved with the movie after reading the script. Scorsese ultimately backed out, but Leo stayed on and recommended his Romeo and Juliet director Baz Luhrmann to take the helm, who in turn cast Nicole Kidman as Olympias. But production on this movie came to a halt when Oliver Stone released his version with Colin Farrell, which ultimately bombed at the box office, scaring away any further attempts to make a movie about the great Alexander. I mean, Leo, come on, buddy, pick up the phone, make it happen already! Hey, you guys want to take some lobsters for your ride home? Those are some of the most expensive movie scripts ever written that ultimately never went anywhere. Does it hurt a bit knowing that studios paid millions of dollars for a story and ultimately never used it? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you so much, guys, and we'll catch you next time.